Good early morning, everybody. Yes, I am back again, once again, making another video like I do every single day, just for consistency. So what do I have to report today? Hmm, must have got a little cut here. It's not that I shaved. Oh well. Um, so what do I have to report here? Uh, quite a bit, maybe? I don't know. Like, I forgot to mention that the other day I got into it with my ex about something really, really ridiculous, like, but I don't know what else to make it. So she's dropping off my kid and the, you know, she, she comes in and she's, um, she starts to rearrange the schedule again. I'm like, yo, I'm tired of this. Do you understand my frustration? Am, am I making this clear enough to you? Like, I don't like the parenting schedule changed up all the time. We have a schedule so that when we have things that are happening, we can schedule around those things. Well, not everything's going to work all the time. Like, yeah, it's a predominantly amount of time. It's like, and she can't deny it. She's doing it all the time. Well, I'm trying to further my career. And, and I'm like, yeah, you know, like you're compromising the schedule to do that. Like... I can't help it that like these things, these events fall on different days. She says, and she'll end up screwing herself saying something silly like, well, I saw there was opportunity. So I, I went ahead and scheduled. I was like, see, that's the problem right there. You decide to do something, schedule it. And then you didn't put into an accountability or respect the schedule. You just come back to me to say, oh, maybe you can do it. Maybe you can't. And uh, she's like, well, I'm just offering this one thing. I was like, look, I don't like being put in the position to keep denying or approving. Don't put me in the position at all. But that's what you deal with. With some people, this is the way they are. And then she came off with this comment. And this is what made me, this was the trigger. It wasn't really a trigger on me, but it triggered back on her. And uh, she was like, look, I'm willing to do anything that would help my daughter's father further his career and help him out in his life, you know, be financial. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I believe that. And she was like, she took offense, like, like she's doing so much for me. I was like, I was like, what the fuck is it? I was like, she was like, I really do, you know, like if you don't want to believe, I was like, yeah, I don't have to believe words. It's like, if your actions meant words, it'd be a different story, but... That's so different from me saying like, oh, I would love it if you would just move back in. You know, it'd be great for you to stay here again. And oh, I would just love it. Are you going to believe that? Of course not. Because they're just words. If it came down to it, I would say, hell no. <laughs> so she's having to deal with that. And she was getting frustrated. She's like, and then she started routing everything around the conversation. She's like, no. I'm saying I would just change, simply change the schedule if you needed something that you need to do. And, and I was like, no, that's what, what triggered you. It was about you stating that you would do things that would help my career. And that's what I was questioning. I don't think, I think you would be open to changing the schedule for me if I needed it at different times. I don't think that you wouldn't. I, I totally agree with that part. I'm talking about whether you're doing something to further my career. You want things that are going to be benefiting your your daughter's father's career. Like, I don't believe that. Like, this holier than thou, and I'm, I am, I am the saint. I am the saint X. No way. Get the fuck out of here. If you were being so sainthood, you would offer to pay me back all of the damn thousands of dollars I gave you. I mean, a sh ton. You'd figure out a payment plan. You said you were going to pay me three years ago. Three years ago, she said she's going to pay me back. Lip service. I don't care about lip service. So, anywho, that's that. Um, that was like a couple days ago. Then yesterday, um, I decided, I was like, okay, my drive was up. I drank some green tea. Kind of a little bit screwed me up. I don't know, caffeine and tea, that warm liquid, just it's something about it just does some weird stuff in my body, but I did get some momentum. Went to the gym, had one of the best gym workouts. I was so thankful for that. Can't say that I'm really sore today, but 
I did do quite a bit. I, I made some, I would consider a new PR. So I did improve on my weights. And I'm um, just looking forward to tomorrow. Like I'm taking one day off, which is today. Eat up, have a good day. And then tomorrow I'm going to go back and do legs. Wait a day. And then I'll go back and do arms. So in this process where I normally would take two days, three days, something ridiculous between me going to work out. I'm now looking at one day off, another day off, and we're talking about just upper upper body. Central nervous system's taking breaks in between these days. But one day off, legs, another day off, then arms. So I actually get three full days of the upper body having a break Versus having like, I think like I was getting like two before and I would go back and then do an upper and lower. So this gives me a full break. But it's it's like you have to like figure out your intensity amounts so that you can accomplish those things in those given periods of working out. For example, if I do upper and lower days, I can't do any of the auxiliary workouts. Like my, my steam doesn't run that long. I don't have an endurance track or intensity track to make it that far. So what I do is I'll just do my upper and lower body uh, like big six, like the, the big workouts. And then I'll do like the smaller ones. I'll try to take the smaller versions of that and add it in. I don't like to skip calves. Calves is like a huge one for me, but I like to keep those in. But then I'll schedule like the auxiliary amounts on the days that I'm just doing specific muscle groups. So I think that's going to work. And for today, what do we have? We have some watermelon. We're going to see if this can work. And I don't hopefully don't have any stomach issues doing it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, they poured sugar into this one. Mmm. Mmm. Finally, good fruit. Mmm. Mmm, God. Now that's special. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So, where was I at? I built my prototype yesterday. That didn't take long at all tried it out on, on my, what I'm putting it on, worked perfect. So now I just have to, it, you know, I started thinking like, do I want to have this licensed out? I might just want to be, you know, manufacture it. The problem is, is that it can go one of two ways. If you get it manufactured, let's say I license it. They know the right process and procedure to go about testing their products to ensure viability on the market versus me just finding a manufacturer and getting it done. It could work, could not work. I don't really know. I don't know the outcome of that. Mmm. Wow. I'm having a moment here. Mmm. So anyways, I'm glad I did it. I'm moving the needle ahead a little bit. I think where I'm starting to get a little overwhelmed or dreading the th process is in the paper or in the wordings because I have to go through and make sure all of the logistics are taken care of. Like, um, like the PPA, like the descriptions for it and making sure all that's good. So when I file for patents, everything's taken care of. I don't really don't know how I'm going to go about doing that. Mmm. Mmm. That's good all the way through. Mmm. So, um, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Um, I did that. I also changed the strut on my hatchback. So I'm like, yes, that was a pain in the butt, but I did it. I went to the store twice to get a wrench set. I was like, well, I went one to get the wrench set. Guy sells me on just an individual one. I'm thinking this is so much more expensive buying it piecemeal. Came back, it didn't work. So I had to go back and I was like, buying the wrench set. 
He's like, oh, you'll use them at times. Like, yeah, I knew that before. That's why I was going to buy it. But for some reason, I listened to you. You know, he's trying to be helpful. So there's that. Me and my kid watched some more Sabrina. And I'm still wondering and debating about what I'm going to do with this girl that I'm talking to right now. I still haven't told her my nights that I'm free this week. I don't even know if I want to see her. It's like, I don't dislike her. I enjoy my time with her. But I want to build a bond. I want to have a connection with this person. I don't want it to just be me. Oh, we went out this week. Oh, we went out this week. Like, if we're forming a, a romantic type bond and where we're like intimate with each other on this level, then if it only keeps staying at that level, then it's cheesy, superficial, and surface for me. And I don't deal with that. I don't like it. And it's comfortable. She's having her needs met. She's getting, she's basically, everything is weighed in her corner. I mean, she doesn't have to feel like she's out of place on any of this. So I think that's why I'm a little bit, um, a little bit annoyed. Maybe, I don't know how to, how to phrase this. I'm too much in this watermelon. Hmm. That was so good. And uh, there's more to repeat from that. Mm, mm. So she's never having to get out, step outside of her comfort zone. I'm stuck in mine, or I'm stuck outside of mine all the time. Well, I would not prefer to keep going out in public. I don't care about that. Sitting and having a conversation that can get interrupted to go buy expensive drinks and to listen, like, if it's live music, different story. I can zone out. I don't even got to hear none of these. That's an event for me. I will go for some live music. But just sit there, chit-chat. Oh, we're done for an hour, hour and a half. That's me. That's like a hassle. I got to get cleaned up, run out, all this kind of weird sh Like, for what? Look cute, dress up, whatever. I don't want to do all that. Like... That's outside my comfort zone. I don't mind doing it periodically. But every freaking week. And I'm starting to see like this is a reoccurring theme. That I went through last time when I was talking with her. I didn't like it then. I don't like it now. I need to step up for myself. So that's the game plan. Soon. I'm probably going to tell her within this one or two. I'm going to ask her a question. Like, so. Do you want... I'm going to leave it in our hands. I'm like, so are we talking about going out again? Or is this, an, uh, are, are you still not feeling comfortable to come spend it or, you know, come spend the night or hang out with me? Cause she'll come up with some bullshit. Like, Oh, well, I've got something early in the morning, so I can't stay. Like you guys, you're, you're busy. Your schedule's so fucking busy. You have no job and you're that fucking busy. I don't want to deal with it. Like, you can't take a break from your independence to have some little dependence on, on us. Like, that's not... I'm not forming a deep connection with you at all. And if it's going to be on a cheesy, superficial level, I'll go find somebody else I can build a bond with to actually want similar things to me. I think if I'm... Sharing my honest self right here, and I am. I've got my answers on what to do. I just gotta do it. She also wants to jump in and do this business stuff with me. I don't know how to feel about her jumping in and doing business with me when she's unreliable. When I wanted her, when all these different events fall through and she's making these silly decisions that screw it up, that's red flags for me. Big. Like, the, the, the biggest red flag is that there's multiple red flags on the field. It's like, yeah. Anyways. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just munching away. I got one more watermelon slice that left and and if you're not if you don't know about watermelon and I've never had this really work out too well for me lately. Maybe when I was younger. But um watermelon has citrulline and it usually acts as a capillary opener or it's in the is it epithelial endoth endothelial layers of your blood vessels? Anyways, it basically makes you more vasculated and it just brings in more nitrous oxide. And so why am I telling all this? Because that usually is a big reverser for anything that is coronary troubles. So if you have heart issues, heart troubles, uh, anything that is uh, calcium building in your body, this will help clear out the arteries a lot more efficiently. Something that I was taking before as a supplement, and I have it over there, I just don't know, I can't justify taking it anymore, is NATO kinase. And I take it, it's like the enzyme that's within NATO that um, Japanese usually eat. And probably when you consume something like NATO and it's in that fermented type um, consumption, I have to try NATO. I have to see if that's going to be something I actually really want to, if it's a cool bean that I enjoy eating, I will eat just the bean. I don't need to go and grab the, the actual supplement or the enzyme because what they there was a study that came out and it was kind of validating or promoting like how this alleviated all these issues with coronary um, calcium in the in the blood vessels and all this in the arteries and all this kind of stuff. But what ended up finding out like this guy comes back in and does like another thorough review of the literature and it was like it was it, it just left a lot of question marks like the the study was questionable on what was causing the actual lowering of the uh, of the uh, calcium in the arteries, or the plaquing, excuse me. So he went and did a separate study that was even more comprehensive, randomized control, a controlled trial. So the outcome of that study produced, or what it showed was that there was no statistical significance in difference between taking NATO kinase or not. So I was like, okay, and it's not like I really have, like I think heart issues, but let me be honest, I, for years, 10, probably 10 plus fucking years, I had restless leg syndrome, I had heart murmurs, I had heart arrhythmias, I had those things, and they were consistently, for every day, I was like, what the, I, and it was getting worse and worse and worse, and I didn't even know what they were, and the reason why I say that, I didn't know what they were, I thought it was just kind of natural because it comes about kind of, they kind of gradually come in and you're just dealing with them. I didn't know what they were until they were completely gone. And it was like, what? What caused it? Magnesium was a big one. So 65% of the heart attacks that people incur are magnesium deficient heart attacks. At least that's what I reviewed before. So when I started taking magnesium, glycinate is the one I promote. Um, there is a taurate and I'm planning on taking it next time. Like I think that's going to be an interesting one because you get a little bit of taurine, I think with the magnesium as something else is kind of interesting anyways. So you take that and like, I took that, I think D3 and K2, but I think the D3 K2 was kind of like they helped, but probably just that the lowest of that kind of dosage was just like, it worked so well. Like it was a 5,000 IU and that's kind of high in the D3 community but it was in this tablet form and a lot of the tablet form doesn't get absorbed well, which is perfect because um, I don't need a high absorption. I do try to go out and get sunlight. And really, if you only have 10 minutes in the sun, got good sun, you're going to be doing a lot better than taking a D3 supplement. So um, I don't know if those two really helped, but I know that magnesium did. And next thing you know, like after a while, my restless leg syndrome went down. All of these problems disappeared, dissipated. I wasn't having anxiety. I used to have the worst anxiety. You think the things that I accomplished yesterday was triumph? I wouldn't be able to look at them. And much less, uh, I wouldn't be able to do any of the things and projects. I wouldn't have like these aspirations and stuff like that and be able to tackle things with my kid. Like Everything was always overwhelming. It was just daunting. <clears throat> and I have moments again like that, but it's not near as bad. So... Um, I promote it. I, I think it's a great weapon against problems like that. And I think, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think people or kids, I think that, or anyone that has, that suffers from ADHD, 
a lot of the times you could just prescribe something like magnesium and it'll alleviate a lot of the issues. is isn't, isn't like a, a thing where you have to go run to your local psychiatrist and have them prescribe to you something like, uh, I don't know what the heck the psychotropics are now, but you don't have to go on the medications. You can just simply take magnesium because our foods are deficient. If the foods are deficient, we need the supple, the supple, uh, the mineral or whatever it is, and, and we're deficient in not being able to receive it, well, guess what? It creates an abnormality or issue or, or adverse problem in the body. So anyways, I'm talking, I'm rambling. I wanna get off the video. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, if, I, if you've already made those comments and I haven't seen them yet, I'll try to get on there and look on the channel and I'll make a video, I'll talk about it. But I'm just making this quick one right here. Um, actually, it wasn't quick at all, it was 20 minutes. And I gotta get my kid and wake her up for school. So thank you so much for listening. I will talk with you on the next video. Peace.